Hey guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video I'll be going through the Hawthorne vs Sydney game in which Sydney again showed that they will probably go under the radar a little bit. I mean, I'm pretty sure some I saw some Hawks fan think that they were going to win by 26 or whatever. It looked alright early but then the Swans decided to actually turn up and in the space of about 5 minutes blew Hawthorne away. Um, and it was all, it almost came on the back of the... Um, the Chole reversal, and then from that point onwards, Hawthorne did absolutely terribly. Um, I think from that point onwards, it was something like 100 to 30 or something. Um, as yeah, the Swans, I think, kicked four goals in about five minutes to end the quarter, and then um, from then on, I don't, I think Hawthorne kicked another about three goals for the rest of the game. So yeah, the Swans just absolutely dominated this game, really happy, and it looked a little bit um, iffy early as. Nick Blakey couldn't hit a man and was just, it was Smothers Central. I think there was probably a good 15 or so Smothers in the first 10 minutes or so. Just every um, every play on that um, you had more than about two steps was a Smother. Um, this one's probably gave away their antics of going inside um, into the centre really, really uh, just easily. And that gave away a couple of Smothers that put on a little bit of pressure, but they were able to rely on their um, defensive um, backman to... I guess, uh, stay firm. But anyway, before we get into this video, remember to like and subscribe, turn the notification bell on so you know when I upload, and let's get into the recap. So, first of all, you have Dylan Moore, 114, 136, and I'm going to have to probably go back and look at um, all of the numbers here, and I'm going to do part of it at the moment here, and I, I hope they have it up at the moment, but I doubt, I don't know if they will. Hawthorne, 2024, they have Sydney numbers up here, and where is he? Yeah, that's the, that's the problem with his role at the moment. You can see Dylan Moore here. He had a 114, but I don't know if that's sustainable. Like, you see these numbers here. Yes, he's getting some midfield time, and I want to see his... It was 2022 that he had this um, midfield here. He had this stretch here in 2022 where he was going... I would say that that's roughly across those five, seven matches. I would say that's probably about a 45% midfield time. 45% midfield time, and that's when he was scoring 110s and stuff across both, I believe. Whereas now he's pulled out one, two 110s, but as we just showed, they were off a combined about 22, 23% midfield time. So I don't know what to think about Dylan Moore, and I want one more game just to be careful about it. Um, just because I don't think he has the, the coral. Uh, the, I, I think he has more of a correlation to CBAs and scoring than the likes of Jack McRae does. And as I think Jaden pointed out, so um, yeah, I just I'm just worried that he drops like a sixty or whatnot because the first game was more because he kicked four that he got up there in scoring, and this game he had a really good marks and tackles. But I'm just wondering if it was not um, if it's something that's sustainable or not. So I'm gonna have to look into that. Um, Newcomb eighty nine. He's the thing. I, I'm I'm just wondering if because Hawthorne is so bad is that Newcomb just cannot get the ball. Uh, 24, I, and I mean, he's not tackling, that's the problem, um, really, and you can just see the whole um, the whole Hawthorne side is just not tackling as well, uh, I wouldn't be surprised just looking at the numbers here if they're down 25 or so in the tackle department, just because there's, what, uh, 6, 5, and 5, and they've got 8, 6s, 7s, and another 6 there, so I wouldn't, and a lot of these guys have got tackles, whereas a lot of these guys don't, so I wouldn't be surprised if they're down 20 or so in the tackle department. Let me just look this up. Teams. Um, here we go. Marks. Tackles. 67 to 45. So 22 down in the tackle department sort of proves that point that um, they're not tackling at the moment. And so they were down 22 in the tackles, but they were also down 67 in the disposals. You cannot be having that as a side. And so the numbers were really weird and just shows how inefficient this Hawthorne side is at the moment. Um, so yeah, Newcomb just needs to get his tackling back, to be honest. If he goes back to 24-5-5, that's a 100 there. So yeah, he just needs to get that tackling back. Scrimshaw, key defender, no thank you. Sicily, another key defender, a 105 though. Getting back to it, I just think they need more key defenders as um, they have Frost down back, <laughs> which conceded, um, I think, of his some of his clangers. I think they may have conceded a goal. Um, he at least had that really bad out of bounds that almost conceded a goal. Um, deliberate out of bounds that almost conceded. 
Uh, Lloyd Meek, 77-106. Uh, he was pretty good against uh, Brody Grandy. So, yeah, he did his job, I guess. Uh, Connor Nash, 76. I don't think he really should uh, be playing, to be honest with you. I think they should be getting their other guys in there, like a McDonald and stuff. I, let me just check the CBAs. I know that we were using this for uh, for the like of Dylan Moore, his analysis. But, um, yeah, they still have Connor Nash, 65%. I would... I just think he's just turning it over way too much and too clumsy at the moment. Will Day, obviously, coming back, should honestly chuck Connor Nash out, and I'd be getting the likes of Cam McKenzie and also Connor McDonald into that midfield, or at least Connor McDonald up to a wing, but I'd have to check his heat map to uh, see if he's actually on the wing or not, or still playing that high half forward. Let me just check here. Um, he played sort of, it looks like a high half forward role. I'd need to double check that. Um, yeah, it looks like he's playing a high half forward role. I'd be getting him onto the wing, to be honest with you. Um, then we get uh, Warple here, 75. Oh, I know he does, um, he gets a lot of contested possession and clearances, but he does butcher the ball a lot. And um, I just don't know if you can have him and also Newcomb in the same midfield as alongside the likes of Connor Nash here. You can just see what's that, 11... 16 clangers between the three of them. It's pretty hard to um, to play well when your midfield has 16 clangers like that. Ken McKenzie, not the most efficient game for him. Five clangers as well. 74, but I think just getting him into the midfield and getting him around the ball, I think it will work a lot better because he's just got, I think, a better kick than about three quarters of the Hawthorne side. Amon as well. Off, was he playing half back? But yeah, 73 for him. Um, 80 super coach, so yeah, he kicked it, what, 71%, so not even that good, but no clangers, I guess. Blake Hardwick, Morrison, McDonald, McDonald 57-49, he really hasn't taken that step, and I think he needs a role change to take that next step, but I think he will, given his, like, junior numbers of averaging, like, 115, which would have been, like, 30-odd touches or whatnot, I think he can take that next step into the midfield, they just need to allow him, but then again, Hawthorne are going to finish, like, bottom, bottom three, I would suspect at this point. Um, and that's going to be a tall midfielder that they're going to get. So it's going to be um, pretty hard for him to get into the midfield, given that they're going to draft a midfielder here um, next year, as unless they trade back um, as the top seven or eight at the moment. And obviously that's uh, that can change, but the top seven or eight are all midfielders. Ginevan, 50, Chol, 50. He gave away that dumb free kick, six claimers as well. Don't know what he did exactly. Yeah, I never really caught the good vision of that. Um, so I'll have to go hunting for that. Um, MP48, Will Day, 47, an all right comeback, 64% time on ground. Um, yeah, I think he'll build into it and we'll see. Uh, Weddle, McGuinness, they decided to tag. Um, they decided to tag Heaney and just let Errol Golden have 25 touches. And then, yeah, so I don't know what was going on there. Um... Mitchell, 28, uh, Gunston, Frost, Sarong, and Ramson as a sub, I don't think is the best option, to be honest with you. Then we go over to Sydney, um, Nick Blakey, you can see the massive negative split just because his first quarter was horrendous. I think he kicked it in the first half at under about 55%, somewhere around there. So, yeah, he was pretty poor in the first half, but then second half, him and especially last quarter, him and Florent just seemed to kick it to one another. Florent had something like 64 points in the last quarter. I'm um, just kicking it and getting uh, marks. I think he had something like nine marks in the last quarter. So yeah, he did. A, he had a pretty good uh, game, I guess, if you want to call it that. Um, I don't know whether it was sort of kicking back and forth, but um, we'll see uh, when I look at it again. Uh, Jake Lloyd, one, two, six, back to his best um, with the 26 touches, 12 marks. Six tackles, though, was pretty good from him. Errol Gordon, 120, 25 touches, 12 marks, two tackles, and a goal at one goal one. I think it was pretty uh, pretty good, and I think it just shows when you give Errol that space. I mean, they, countless times they gave him 15 metres of space on the wing, and he would just chop it, chop the Hawks up. Um, then you have here um, Chad Warner, 102, 135 super coach. He's a damaging player, so when he... Um, has a damaging game like that with 14 contested possessions, six clearances. You're going to get a game like that where he just um, unleashes and one goal, uh, one goal and 22 touches, eight tackles, pretty good game. Row bottom, 99, 24 touches, six tackles, six marks. Um, and yes, pretty low tackle numbers for him, only six. But um, yeah, he had something like 18 and I think six tackles in the first half. So no tackles in the second half probably shows that that could have easily been nine or 10. But I think the Swans led off the intensity contest possession-wise in the second half. Isaac Heaney, 90 and three. 
sorry, uh, 90 fantasy points, three goals, 21 touches, three and three. Um, probably close to getting another potential vote as, um, or votes. Um, I think he probably gets a two, potentially three. Um, just because I think uh, Nick Blakey and Ollie Florence work happened a lot in the last quarter, you could give. Uh, you probably could also give it to. I th- so I think it will be Heaney, Rowbottom, and Warner that um, are the guys that get the votes. I don't think they will give it to. Uh, where is he? To uh, McCartan, just because I think that they don't really recognise the key defenders, even though McCartan was huge. So yeah, I reckon Heaney again is probably a good. Three votes still clear, and one of his main competitors in Rosie is now injured for a week or two. So, um, I, I, I at least expect Rosie to be injured. So, um, Heaney's probably, hopefully, going to um, do well in the uh, Sydney uh, Derby so that he can uh, get another sort of three votes clear there. McInerney, 86 one or two. Don't know what happened to him as I didn't watch the second half, but um, 29, uh, sorry, and 19 touches, four and seven. I don't know whether that was just a tactical just to get Braden Campbell on because Braden Campbell is also a winger. Matty Roberts, 82. He scrounged in the last quarter for like a 38 to get up to 82 and 80. So yeah, happy about that. Um, McLean, 81, 97, uh, 14 hit outs, um, one goal, two. So, yeah, pretty happy about that as I think they just rested. Did they just rest Brody Grundy in the last quarter just because they could? The game was dead, so might as well rest your Ruckman and not get him injured. Um, I think that's probably what happened. Uh, Cunningham, 80 and 60. Let me actually just check. I can check this through uh, this, actually. I can check it through here. Um, and it'll show us a Ruck contest, and I think you'll see. Because he's done this before where he just, in games that they just blow out a team, they just decide to rest Brody Grundy. Uh, yeah, that's a that's a clear rest, um, I reckon. And the uh, and the Gold Coast game also, I think, was a slight rest as well. Um, or was it? Um, no, that was Rowan Marshall's game. Sorry, that I was thinking about that someone got a rest in. But yeah, you can just see he's usually a little bit higher than sixty five percent. So that must indicate a rest um, in the last quarter, especially with him only having seventy one percent tog. Um, Cunningham, we talked about McDonald. I thought he was really good early. Three goals, three. I think he's living up to sort of developing that game as well. I think he's up to, was it 16 goals in seven games? A pretty good. That's on track for roughly about 50 goals, which is what we sort of want, especially given that you've got Heaney producing. I think um, Haywoods as well is on 11 as well. Um, I think you got, I think Amadi's on eight or nine as well. You sort of got everyone pr- uh, producing. Tom Papley's on around that same number. I let me actually just check the this one's goal kicking for you guys. Um, season leaders here. Then we go to filter team Sydney. So you got um, Logan on twelve. Uh, sorry, Logan on sixteen. Amadi twelve. Heaney twelve. Papley eleven. Haywood eleven. Warner nine. So you sort of have already there. What's that? Forty. 62, um, 71 between the top six already, which is basically 10 goals a game between the top six. So, yeah, they, they're producing at the moment. And I think they've got the second best offense behind, is it GWS or something? I don't know. But I, the Swans haven't played North Melbourne, which hopefully will help. Um, so that we got down to Haywood and Grundy, Melican, um, James Jordan did his job, 71, um, chipped in for a goal as well. Sam Wicks, two goals, 69. Tom McCartan as well, huge, but um, not going to be fantasy relevant. 69 there. Um, Taylor Adams is 63, um, probably still working into it, a 70% tog. Um, still running it out a little bit, but um, he did his job, I guess. Um, seven contested possessions there, three clearances. Robbie Fox, 61. Tom Papley, 53. Um, Joel Amati, 25. And Braden Campbell, 25. And this one's have Luke Parker coming back, who had... 34 touches in the VFL. You also had Angus Sheldrick, 20, 30-odd touches in the VFL as well, and their loss to Hawthorne, uh, or Box Hill, sorry. So um, they'll probably be back, um, potentially both of them, um, which I don't know who drops. Because <laughs> part of me says that, yeah, it'll be um, James Jordan. I'll see. Um, I don't think McInerney was injured, else that would have been flagged in uh, the uh, from other Swans fans. 
Um, Braden Campbell probably could use some more game time rather than subs. So whether he, uh, whether someone, one of the wingers switches out, maybe a James Jordan is sub or something, given his flexibility, and Braden Campbell um, comes back into the side. But then again, you need someone to drop for um, Luke Parker, which could be Fox actually now thinking about it. But Fox seems to have gone off the half-back flank rather than the forward flank uh, this week. So it'll be interesting to see what they do with regards to um, Luke Parker, but he will be back this week. Someone will go out, and it, it is quite possible that it will be a winger. I, high odds that it's uh, Braden Campbell, and then someone like a James Jordan goes to the sub or something like that. But we'll wait and see on that one. But anyway, that is pretty much the video there wrapping up the Hawthorne versus Sydney game and I guess all of the round seven games in general game reviews are done so then you'll have uh, the uh, A4 Fantasy team uh, I guess uh, round review there for me on Tuesday and then Wednesday you'll have the trade targets and cash cows and Thursday you'll have my tips as well as my team previews for uh, round eight so I guess you'll have that um, then but anyway I guess I'll see you guys tomorrow for the team A4 Fantasy team review Bye, guys.